show up. I just got purples in my hair. Kind of like it. Hey, what do you guys think? <laughs> hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. Got a lot of fun in store for you today. So what are we waiting for? Let's get crafting. Seriously liking the purples. A little bit of reds in there too, but they're kind of hard to see. Oh, there's some red. <laughs> Today we are working on DIY Rustic Farmhouse 4th of July home decor using mostly Dollar Tree supplies. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, I'm going to use a spindle I got at Habitat for Humanity. You could use something like this, the handle from the Dollar Tree plunger, which is only about an inch shorter, so it'll, it would work great. And for my base, I'm using two pieces of wood. This first is from Dollar Tree, and the second is from, I don't know where, my supply. And you can only use one piece for a base. If you want to double up, you could use this cute little mini crate from Dollar Tree or any other kind of home decor thing. And I've got two of these stars from Dollar Tree as well. I'm taking one of the stars and my jigsaw, and I'm cutting about a half inch off of the perimeter all the way around. Um, if you don't have access to a jigsaw, you of course could skip this part and you could just use one star. I'm using two because I want the thickness as well as by cutting a half inch off of the perimeter of the top star here, it'll kind of give me a shadowy effect. But you know, you could just of course leave it like it is. Like I said, if you don't have access to a jigsaw, and then you can double your stars so they're thicker, or just use one star if you only have one in your supply. No need to run out and buy another one. So I've got pre-drilled holes in my base. I don't see a need for wood glue because what we're putting on here isn't all that heavy. I think these three screws are going to be great. And so I'm just getting them all screwed into my spindle so it's nice and stable, ready to go two stars here. I'll be using Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth on my spindle and base and the larger star and five of these little stars I got from Walmart and a package of stars and Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color Yankee blue and rustic red. I'll be using to um, paint part of the big star here as you can see I've got it kind of taped off on the diagonal there and then I have got some other additional stars here that I'll be painting in you know some red and blue as well two coats going all the way around. I've got it also taped off to the side here so I can start with my stripes and the rustic red of course painted in the untaped areas and then once that's dry I will tape over the red and then leave the other areas exposed and I'll come back in with that drop cloth paint and paint that as well. It's kind of cool I think the way I had to tape this off um, I mean, I could have went more straight, but I kind of wanted to do it at the diagonal because I thought it would give it a nice fun flare to the piece. And then I'm using my pounce brush and this drop cloth paint and I'm pouncing it on two coats. I heat set it in between. I'll do front and back. And by heat setting it, it gives us this nice, great texture. Coming in, I'm using these uh, little signs that come off of that hanging sign from Dollar Tree. And I have this thick star. Now you could use one of the thick stars from Dollar Tree or these thinner stars from Dollar Tree or these package of stars you can get at Walmart. Rustic red, I know the star's already red, but it's not quite the right shade. And I'm just using this star out of my supply because it was a little bit more sanded and distressed already. And then of course painted the little sign off of the bigger sign and distressing all the pieces, all the wood and the little stars I'm going to be using and things like that. I've got my paper here. I traced around everything already cut out. I took the papers to my sewing machine and I sewed around the edges, used the open end of my scissor blades and scraped around the edges to add some texture and we'll see that later in one of the other projects. So now I'm just kind of gluing everything front and back to my pieces here. I know I'm kind of paper crafting on the bottom, but by where I sanded all the pieces, all the wood pieces and stuff, it'll bring up that rustic from the top where I'll be sanding that. So it'll all look cohesive and look nice. Once everything here is ready to go, I will start in by sanding my spindle and my larger star. It does look nice unsanded, so it's kind of hard to take it to sand, but I will sand it. So you have the choice to choose. Here's what it looks like. Oh, nope. <laughs> I'm a step ahead of myself. Use my Cricut Design Space and let freedom ring as part of my title with the Georgia Beyond the Mountains and Beach Sunset fonts from Defont.com. Then once that's done, we're going to the stars so you can see what they look like with the tape all taken off. Get this glued on here. Let's get it together. Let's get it in the right order. 
here we go finally it does look nice doesn't it but i'm going to sand it i do use my electric sander here's what it looks like really heavily sanded i wanted it really rustic you could choose to go a little lighter or like i said leave it like it was but i just wanted it really really rustic so i'm using uh some gorilla glue first here and i'm going to take the larger star only and i'm going to glue it to the uh, base of the spindle at the top and then once that's set a little bit i'll go ahead and add some nails as well but I don't want to glue the top star on yet. If you're going to double star, you don't want quite, quite want to glue it on yet because then if you go to nail it in, you're going to see those nails, right? So we want to get the bottom star on first. Then I'm using a combination of Gorilla Glue and Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, and we will get this top star on. And then I'm going to use these little clamps. I'm going to let that set up for an hour or so so it's clamped enough and everything's settled down in. And then we're going to start gluing our pieces to the bottom that we added paper to. So our larger star, I'm going to just kind of glue at an angle. And the Fabri-Tac glue works perfectly wonderful for this. Everything sticks on fine. In fact, this fell on the floor and nothing came off. I accidentally knocked it off. Nothing came off. It's all set fine. Getting our little sign on here. And then I'm just going to layer some of the smaller stars around the edges. So as, as if they're, you know, just kind of spilling out down around the base. Perfect. One more on this side and then we'll go to the top. I didn't want to do too much on this. Taking some white twine I get from Dollar Tree, I'm just wrapping it around this edge. You can see I have one little clamp still at the top. That needed to set a little longer. Tying this in a bow and then I'll of course cut off the tails a little bit as short as I want them. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my stars on. I've got them kind of laying in place here and I'm going to go ahead and glue those down. And then I'll go ahead and add a quote to the right side. It says, Sweet Land of Liberty. And those are in the Corona and Georgia font when I bring that up. And I'll have all the fonts listed down below in my description box for all the projects today. So our title says, Sweet Land of Liberty, Let Freedom Ring. Here comes the title on this side. And then once I get this title on there, this project is complete. Before we move on to the next project, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Linda. I love to post all sorts of DIY home decor projects from Dollar Tree DIYs to rustic to farmhouse to primitive, throw in a little bit of paper crafting. I like to post videos once a week, so if you like what you're seeing today, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single project from me. With that said, let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'm gaining inspiration from a project I made last year. This is a 9 by 14 piece. I'll have the link to the video in the description box in case you've missed it. I wanted to make a mini one, the exact same design, just a mini. Of course, Dollar Tree has out now these USA shaped marker art kits. So I bought two of those kits and I'm doing the exact same process as the last project. I've got it taped off to paint my blue on the left side. And then I've got it taped off on the right to start in with my stripes, the exact same colors. And I'm doing, uh, use two kits because I do want to glue them together again for a thick, uh, thicker piece. But you could just use one, you know, if all they had was one or you only have one in your supply or whatever, you know, um, one works perfectly fine. Like I said, I just wanted it a little bit thicker. And once the red dries, I'll come in with the drop cloth color here, get that painted in. I think this is so cute mini I love it how 
tiny it is. Perfect. Two of the tumbling tower block pieces here, although you will need four. And I've got one star, and then I'm doing the pouncy brush to add the texture onto the star. I'll glue four Jenga blocks into an L shape. You'll see that a little bit later. And then I'm just painting the back of the other USA shape sign so it's nice and finished off. Using Gorilla Glue and Beacon Fabri-Tac glue again to glue the two together and clamp it off. The stripes and everything look so nice. It was almost hard to distress it, but I did. I came in with the 80 grit sandpaper and my sanding block, heavy, heavy distressing. You, of course, could add as little or as much distressing as you want. Once that's done, I'm again using the white twine and I'm gonna just wrap it around three times or so and then tie a little bow. And then I will glue the star to the left side. And then my quote, exact same quote as the picture of that project I showed you, Cricut Design Space, Corona and Georgia fonts. And I have a little swirl on the quote and that just, I got off the internet, just, you know, looked up swirls and, you know, downloaded into my program. So once I go to put these Jenga blocks on, this United States sign now likes to tip toward the left. <laughs> so you want to make sure that your Jenga blocks are glued as far to the left as possible. And then when you go to glue your sign on, you want to make sure the eastern half of your United States is tipped up just a little bit. Now once it's all glued on and set, I went to set it on my tear tray and I set it on a wood slice and I liked that so much, I went ahead and just glued it to the wood slice and there my project was. And once this is all glued together, this project is complete. Let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project, I'm gonna use three of these arrows from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use my jigsaw and cut off the ends. And then I'm gonna use two of these signs from Dollar Tree and cut them directly in half after, of course, removing all that uh, hanging twine and stuff. Now, if you don't have access to a jigsaw again, you could use leave those little ends on there. I went back and forth a lot whether I wanted to leave them on or not, and in the end, of course, decided to cut them off. And then those other signs from Dollar Tree, they're a lot softer wood, so I know that you could cut those in half. You know, you have to make several passes with your craft knife, but you should be able to cut those in half. And then, of course, once everything is cut, I will go in and just kind of sand off, um, you know, all the rough edges and make everything all nice and smooth. Perfect. Then I'm going to come in with some scrapbook paper. I've got blues and uh, reds of course and what I decided to do was for this banner I wanted to kind of do it in the tradition of um, the way the flag looks you know the left side is blue with white stars and then it moves over to the right side of the red and white stripes so this banner here the left side is done in blues and then the right side is done in the red and white stripes well and some polka dot too but the right side you know is red the left side is blue so i'm taking all my pieces every other piece and i'm just tracing them in my papers um, the back side of all my banner pieces I cover completely with the paper. The front sides, when I trace them, I trace them and then I redraw a new perimeter for the first layer of paper, making it about an eighth inch shorter than the wood. And then when I come in for my second layer of paper, because the front side will have two layers of paper, I retrace that again with a new perimeter and I come in about another uh, eighth of an inch or so and that way you can see the layers from the wood to the different uh, paper pieces. I've got two of these thick wood stars from Dollar Tree I'll be using on this left side. Here's my other papers, uh, same shade, shades of reds I'll be using and I'll trace those with the rest of banner pieces. I'll come in with Dixie Belle chalk paint and the color drop cloth here and all my you know thick stars and my banner pieces I'll go ahead and paint around the perimeter and then I'll come in with just around the edges and do a little bit of sanding 80 grit sandpaper and my sanding block 
And now here's where I'm coming in. I told you earlier I would show you what I do. Take the open end of my scissor blades here and I just scrape it along the edge of the papers to give it a distressed look. And then I again sewed around all the edges of my paper. Nothing special with the sewing. Um, I show it off and on in my videos actually sewing. This time I didn't, but I just use a size 10 needle, all polyester thread. That's what my machine likes. Uh, tension set on four and stitch length set on four. And I just sew on it like it's regular paper. Here's the front where you can see part of the perimeter. And then when I add the next piece of paper, you'll see the layer of that first paper below it because it's cut shorter. The back is all the way around and here's how the layers look in the front. I'll do that on all my pieces here. I won't show everything on all these pieces. You know, we'll just jump around a little bit because you know, it's a lot of gluing. One of the stars is already done. So I'm gonna add this other uh, paper to this other star here. I'm starting kind of with the cream card stock and then kind of a, kind of a cream on top. And then we'll go down here as we're working down the right side of our banner here, adding our red areas. I went back and forth whether I wanted all red and white stripe, but in the end I decided to add just a couple of the mini dots. So I'm using these small stars I got at Walmart. If you didn't have those, you could use these from Dollar Tree or larger, the th um, flatter, thinner stars. If you wanted to carry the large stars all the way across, they have those at Dollar Tree or these at Walmart. I was going to leave them plain, but in the end, it's like these need something. So I decided to carry the star theme all the way across, but I'm doing them, as you see here, in the exact same paper that's on there. So you'll see that little bit of raised star, but it's also kind of camouflage so I think that looks kind of cool it gives you a little bit of texture but it's not standing out because I wanted the stars on the left to really stand out for the stars of the flag so normally I would use my crocodile here but I it doesn't work it's not wide enough so I have a crocodile big bite here it's got longer reach and it's a little bit more room so that I can get it through onto my banner pieces here once I punch my holes, I use this as my pattern to mark my holes on all my other pieces and then use my crocodile Big Bite to punch the holes. If you don't have one of these, of course, you can go in and pre-drill your holes. That would be my best option. So I've got this cute star fabric from Hobby Lobby. I got sale for a dollar and then this other red and white stripe Hobby Lobby for like a dollar fifty and then white twine from Walmart. I'm going to run the white twine through all my pieces leaving about a, oh, an inch and a quarter in between my banner pieces here. I'll run that all the way through. Skip ahead here in a minute. There we go. We're miraculously to the last piece. And then once that's done on my left side, I've got a loop here. All I did, taking it to the right side to show you, you've got a piece left over, so I just kind of fold it in half and then I take that and make it into a knot and it gives us a little loop for hanging on both sides. Now I've got my ribbon pieces here and I'm going to do the same thing as the scrap of paper on my banner pieces. I'm going to start with blue ribbon on the left side and then I will switch over to the red and white ribbon down the right side kind of keeping in with that cohesive look of again blue on the left and red and white on the right. Real simple, easy banner. I like how it turned out. I think it makes a great statement. There's not a whole lot to it. You know, you know what it's talking about. Um, anyway, celebrates the holiday. And once I get my ribbon pieces on here, that makes this project complete. So I hope you love how these projects turned out. I love how rustic and farmhouse they are. I love how easy they are to make, at least I think so. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project do you want to make right now. Please give this video a thumbs up. And remember, if you're not a subscriber and you like what you see here today, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. Before I go, I want to leave you with one final thought. Believe that God cares. Believe that He hears you even when it is silent. Believe that He will wipe your tears. Believe that you only need whisper His name if nothing else can be said. Believe that you are His and He is yours. Believe that He loves you with an everlasting love that has no end. 
If you feel alone, God is right there. He is standing right there. Have the courage and faith to reach out and touch him. Believe that you are not alone. Believe that his promises are always true and he will not leave you. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.